Jane's train of thought then, which is should the UK be selling arms to countries under investigation for genocide, thereby aiding in a potential genocide? Is the profit from arms sales worth the risk of complicity in international crimes? And Tracy, I'd like you to answer next. I'll start with the very simple ones. No, we shouldn't be selling arms to Israel. Um, no, it's not worth the price. The Green Party was very clear in right from the beginning, um, condemning what happened on the 7th of October as completely unacceptable. Um, however, I am old enough to remember Bloody Sunday and the actions of the British government then was the biggest recruiting exercise for the IRA. The same thing is happening again now. The actions of the Israeli government and the IDF are going to drive more people towards Hamas. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we need to end the ceasefire now unconditionally. I do not believe America should be involved in this because they're too closely tied to Israel. So it needs to be independent people getting that ceasefire agreed by all sides, unconditional. We also need the unconditional release of all hostages immediately. But we also need to stop Israel. They need to get out of the occupied territories. As a country, we need to recognize Palestine as a state uh, and get Israel to adhere to international law. It is illegal under international law and therefore a, 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 a crime to withhold water, food, electricity, and medicine. And that's exactly what the Israeli government have done repeatedly. There's 40,000 people dead, and that's an atrocity. We've all stood by and watched. It needs to stop. Thank you very much. Tom. Thank you. This is such an awful, awful situation we find ourselves in. Um, yeah, what happened on the 7th of October was truly horrendous. What we're seeing now is also truly horrendous. I think everybody here agrees with that. Um, yeah, we can all call for um, ceasefires, but what we really need is a lasting ceasefire. And you're right, that involves parties sitting around the table, showing each other respect, and I'm not sure Either one or both parties are doing that at the moment. Um, I don't consider what Israel are doing as genocide. I question whether it is proportionate, but I don't believe it is genocide. I also believe that Israel has a right to defend itself. For that reason, I would continue saying arms. <laughs> So, Christian, how would you respond? Um, <clears throat> this is something that's very close to my heart. Um, so, my family, they come from Sri Lanka originally, and we belong to the ethnic minority, and some or many of you might know here what happened in Sri Lanka not so long ago and how people there suffered and thousands and thousands were killed. Um, thousands and thousands of Tamils were killed there. So this is something very, very close to my heart and I feel very strongly about. And what's happening in um, Gaza and Palestine at the moment is horrific. It should not be happening. And the Sutton and Chief Labour Party were one of the first Labour branches across the whole country to actually call for a ceasefire to and what's, um, what's happening in, in Gaza. Um, and again, the Labour Party in February, the Labour MPs, they actually brought a motion to Parliament for a ceasefire, which was voted through, which some Conservative MPs and other MPs actually voted against. And that was passed through. So the Labour Party has called for a ceasefire time and time again over the last few months. And with regards to the arms sales, one thing that is clear in the law is that British arm licences should not be granted if there is a risk of facilitating serious 
um, serious violations of human rights and the Labour Party has asked the government to publish this advice and the Foreign Secretary has still not done it even though it's been two months now. Thank you very much.